Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Dark Room. Today, we're going to be talking about something a little different. We're still going to be working with film, but we're actually going to be kind of playing around with how to make images on the film. Um, and specifically, what I'm going to be talking about is uh, pinhole photography. So, I've kind of got a couple things on the bench here that we need for pinhole photography. Um, first thing being just a bunch of tape, a bunch of different tapes for kind of sealing things up. Um, a little bit of cardboard. And I actually have a tube which we'll be using later to actually make our own pinhole uh, camera but to start out with we're just going to talk about pinhole uh, lenses and just the whole concept of pinholes on something a little more easy uh, most of you guys probably have a DSLR or some kind of film camera so sometimes making a pinhole can be an easy, as easy as just taking a regular unmodified lens cap like this guy here, this Canon one. And what we do is we drill a hole in the middle of it, and then we take um, a little bit of double-sided tape and some tin foil, and then by carefully kind of placing that on the inside here, like this, by carefully placing some of that tin foil on the inside of here, like I said, I just used some double-sided tape. By doing that, we can make our own little kind of pinhole body cap and that works really nice because now you can kind of test out different pinhole sizes uh, different techniques on digital so you're not wasting any film you're not wasting any time and most everybody probably has an extra body cap laying around so you know pretty easy to do so like I said you basically just take unmodified body cap like this kind of square up drill a hole in the center of it and then some tape and some tin foil um, one thing to note when you're making a hole in your tin foil um, like I said it's nice because you can try a couple different techniques uh, what I found works is just basically any tiny pin like this and you apply just the smallest amount of pressure to a piece of tin foil and just kind of rotate a little bit ever so lightly And by doing that, you will come up with, let's see if we can even show this. Ooh, maybe not, huh? Just the tiniest little pinhole. And a lot of times it's something where you have to hold it up to the light to actually see if it made it through. So when we talk about this, the smaller the pinhole, the sharper the image is the basic concept behind this. So taking and just pushing the pin through all the way is going to give you a very large opening. You're going to have a lot of light coming in. Oops, that was way too bad. Yeah, there. I mean, you'll have a lot more light come in, but yeah, see there, you can actually even see that. It's so big. You can actually see that hole. Whereas I have a hole here I made and you can't even see that on the camera. But believe me, if you put it on a cap and bring it out in the sunlight, you definitely get an image through it. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, basic concept though, smaller the hole, the sharper the image, the less light that comes through, so the more focused it is. Um, and then in the opposite of that, bigger hole equals more light through, but a much softer image. So the best thing I can do is just to tell you when you're trying out this pinhole photography is to try different things, try different combinations. And we, as we get into building our pinhole camera, which I have my notes here, we can talk more about the concept of what makes... Uh, the right things come together for a pinhole camera. You know, we'll talk about the size of um, the image we're going to use. In this case, we're going to have a 4x5 photographic paper. Um, and then, really, the distance uh, that our pinhole will be from our film, which is usually kind of taken by the diagonal of the paper. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, now that we've kind of talked about the body cap here, let's go ahead and start actually building a pinhole camera so we'll cut here I'll get this kinda of cleaned up a little bit and uh, we'll start talking about building our pinhole camera today and how those factors and those numbers are gonna work into what we use for that alright so we're back and I basically have just a piece of tube stock that I picked up from uh, the recycling bin at work um, so we're going to use this to make our pinhole camera. Now, one of the easier ways would just be to use a box, like a shoe box, uh, or things like that. I thought we'd go for a wide-angle image, and by using this, <clears throat> and by taking and making so the film 
kind of wraps around the back side of this, we'll get a curved image plane, um, and that'll kind of give us a wide angle effect. So that'll be kind of fun. Uh, we'll play around with that. But the first thing I need to do is cut this down because it obviously doesn't need to be this long when we're only um, going to be putting a piece of paper in here about this big. So that'll be pretty easy. I think what we'll do is we'll take and we'll start from this end. And if I have my film laid in here lengthwise like this, really what we'll do is just mark this and make a cut and then cover the top and bottom to make it light tight while kind of making a way to get to the film and change it out when we need to. So let's make a quick mark. And now what I can do is cut this down and we'll seal both ends while still being able to kind of get access and put film in in the dark bag. And that's an important thing to talk about. So when we have our film here, in this case this is paper we're using to do these uh, exposures on a pinhole camera just because 4x5 sheets of photo paper are much cheaper than 4x5 sheets of film. So in the terms of that trial and error, it's nice to keep the cost down a little bit. But um, we just need to make it big enough that being uh, the camera or our pinhole camera, just big enough for the film but also we need to keep it small enough because to put that film in there we need to be in a light proof environment so we need to be able to load it into our dark bag and then in the dark add that piece of film in there close it back up so we can take it outside and expose it you know pinhole cameras are kind of a one shot deal where you expose it bring it back inside take the paper out and either place it away for later or develop it um, in a tray bath which we'll talk about later in this video so one of the big constraints I'm working with is when I cut this down and create it, I still need to be able to fit it inside my dark bag. So <laughs> a big, big point there is making sure that it's big enough to fit inside uh, my device I'm using to put the film in there in a uh, totally light proof area. So uh, I'm going to go off camera and cut this down with the saw and then we can cut back and kind of start getting the top and bottom on here in a way that we can uh, switch out film. And then we'll also drill a hole uh, for where the pinhole will sit with the piece of tinfoil we're going to put a hole in later. So let's cut away, uh, cut this guy down, and then we'll come back and get going again. All right, and there we go. Now we have our tube cut down, and we can kind of clean this up. Oh, well, clean the rest of this mess up too. Then we can start taping the ends on. All right, so now we're gonna just take a little extra cardboard. Um, thankfully, hopefully everybody has an Amazon box laying around or some kind of shipping box. And what we'll do is basically just come up with a top and a bottom cap uh, for our camera here. So I'm just gonna lay this out and trace it and then cut it out with my knife. And we'll just make a second one and we'll have our bottom and top caps and it'll be that simple. And for us it'll just be as easy as taking and kind of attaching these tops and bottoms. Like I said we're gonna have to make it so we can still get into our camera so otherwise how are we gonna put in our film, uh, switch it out and do all that fun stuff. So I think what I'll do is just take and kind of attach this tab here I left connected and just kind of put a little bit of a lid on here and just having a little bit of a lid will be enough of a seal to be able to kind of take a piece of tape on and off and pop this on and off and uh, keep our film in here. So before we put the caps all the way on, um, a good thing to touch on will be how we're going to actually hold this film in here. One of the big things you want to do is to keep your film in here and keep it kind of flat, or in this case, flat against the surface we're holding it to. Because um, any kind of wave or movement in that film will kind of result in the image being a little weird or maybe not as sharp as it could be. But with a pinhole camera, it's really not about sharpness. It's just about the creativity of what we're doing here. So what I'm going for is to hold the film against the back like this, and then the pinhole will be uh, on the opposite wall of this. So... What I'm going to do is I have a little bit of tape here. This tape is actually a foam-backed tape uh, with an adhesive on both sides. Uh, what I'm going to do is by just taking off half of that adhesive and laying it in here this way, I should be able to take 
and kind of hold the film inside that foam without it sticking to the tape and be able to kind of slide that piece of film in and out. So let's go ahead and try that quick just to make sure we can hold the film in here right before we get everything closed in and make it harder to work with. All right, so I have my pieces of foam back tape here, so it's got a little bit of rigidity. And what I actually did was took a piece of black electrical tape and ran an edge on each side. This will be kind of where that film sits once I put it in here. And then the sticky side will kind of adhere to the wall, that tube, and help me out with that. So uh, the tricky part is here, we'll kind of try to mark this out and figure out exactly where we want this to sit and then once we get that set we'll use this to kind of figure out where to drill that hole on the other side so everything lines out well. So best thing we can do here is just kind of make a few marks with a pencil figure out what's straight and how we want that film to sit and then we can lay those strips in there. Because with that sticky tape we're gonna get like one shot And now we kind of have marks on either side so we can know where to place that tape in and work with it. And alternatively, if I had a little more dexterity, I could possibly just hold it over the edge of the paper and then set it in there and kind of use that as my guide. But we'll see. We'll kind of place this in here and see how this goes. There. So now kind of have our film holders on either side so if we did this right I should be able to take this piece of film or this piece of paper and slide it in here there look at that now we have a way to hold that film flat against the curved back of our tube here. So that's awesome. So now we can go ahead with covering up. Obviously we have some holes to cover up here that were just from this tube I got. And then we'll talk about, like I said, covering the top and the bottom. And then once we have that done, we will basically be one step away from our pinhole camera. Uh, that last part of the pinhole camera will be obviously putting the pinhole into this camera. So let's take care of the top and bottom. All right, so we got the bottom and the top onto this pinhole camera we're building. Uh, I went with the adage that if some is good, more must be better. And, you know, just kind of overdid it. And it's all in the purpose of making this light tight so you don't have any light kind of creeping in from the edges. Um, and we can probably even take and put like a wrap of electrical tape around the edge of this once we get our film loaded in and take it out in the daylight. But right now we have a pinhole camera without a pinhole in it. So, like I said, what we need to do is kind of look at the center of this film and then kind of draw some lines and figure out how or where to put the pinhole on this. So big part of this is we'll need a tape measure and we'll first of all figure out the top and bottom distance here to figure out the exact center and then we will do a little math and try to figure out uh, really what is 180 degrees opposed from where we put our film back in. So We'll take some quick measurements. Um, I already measured this, so I already know that this is a six inch diameter tube. And I picked this, or I picked this size, because one of the cool things is when you're working with not only pinholes, but with lenses in general, um, there's some quick math you can do. Um, if you find the diagonal of the film, which in the case of a four by five sheet of film, the diagonal is six inches, you know, do your Pythagorean theorem. So when you're working with a 4 by 5 sheet of film and your diagonal is 6 inches, uh, what that basically translates into is that what would be a normal or an ideal focal length for that piece of film is always the diagonal of it. So in this case, 6 inches diagonal, 6 inches from the film to the focal point equals the ideal focal point. Um, you see this a lot in all cameras, obviously. If you look at 35 millimeter cameras, um, in a 35 millimeter camera, the distance from corner to corner works out to be right around that 50 millimeter range, which makes sense because some of the sharpest, uh, easiest lenses to make for the 35 millimeter camera range are those 45 millimeter, those 50 millimeter lenses that you'll see. So 
that's the big reasoning behind that. And then obviously it translates to all different film types. Uh, on medium format, I believe that the ideal size is 127. No, the ideal is 75. Um, so if you look at like the cross section of some medium format 120 films, usually that 75 mil seems to be that ideal distance. Um, and then, like we said, working up to four by five, four by five is 127 millimeters. Um, and if you go and kind of gap that out, 127 millimeters, pretty close to six inches uh, for those of you guys who are good at making conversions in your head. So, like I said, let's go ahead. We know that this is six inches across. So by knowing that it's six inches across, we can figure out the circumference of this. And then if we take the circumference of the six inch tube and then half that, we'll come up with a distance that is halfway from our film side to the front side here. And if we measure that from both ways, account for a little bit of error, we should come up with the opposite side of this without any problem. So let me go grab a tape measure quick and we'll play that game. All right, so with a little quick math, remembering that circumference is pi times r times two, um, we can come up with about 20 and a half because the outside of this is actually about six and a half inches. The inside diameter is six. So with it being 20 and a half, we know if we take from the back and go about 10 inches, that should get us to the front. So if we measure that off quick, we come up with a nice center mark here. So we know that this is about it. And then, like I said, what we want to do is go top to bottom on this so that we're centered on our image plane. So in this case, we also cut this at about six inches. So ideally, we want this guy at about three inches here. So there we have a pretty good point for the center of our pinhole. So now we're going to get to the point of, hey, how are we actually going to put a hole through this piece of cardboard? Um, That'll be easy for that. We're going to employ a little bit of power tools and just kind of use a countersink head and just put a hole through here. Um, the size of the hole, not super important because we're actually going to be taking that piece of tin foil, like I said, and using that as a thin material. Um, whenever we're doing any of this, you want to have the thinnest material possible to actually have your pinhole through because obviously what you're doing is focusing that light through a point. So you want that point to be as thin as possible, giving you the sharpest image as possible. Um, also tying into that hole being as small as possible to focus that light down. So we'll talk about that a little more, but first of all, let's get this hole drilled. All right, so now we've got our hole drilled. And what we're gonna do is go on to the last step, and that is gonna be putting in our actual pinhole lens, which is just going to be um, a small piece of tin foil that we're going to tape uh, in front of this bigger hole we bored out here. So to do that, we're just going to take a small piece here. And like I said, the important thing is to just have a pin as small as you can. Obviously, um, I have this thumbtack here, not the smallest, but um, by just applying the lightest bit of pressure, you can make a pretty small pinhole, even with a larger piece like this. So like I said, light, light, light bit of pressure, just enough to punch through the material we're working with. There. Like I said, you can't even really see it on camera. That's how small it is. But uh, when you're doing this, just by holding it up to the light, you'll be able to see whether or not light is making it through. And you should be able to see the tiniest bit of light coming through your pinhole. And uh, that'll be a good indication that you've done it right. So now I'm just gonna kinda cut this out of my sheet here. And the tricky part will just be lining this up as best we can on the center and then uh, taping it in place. So I'm 
So the last thing to cover is, so now we have this pinhole set here. Um, and like with a normal camera, you have a lens, which we've created here as this pinhole. Um, you have the film, which we have set up to hold inside this camera. So the last thing we need is a shutter because you need a way to control the exposure time. Because right now, um, simply there's always going to be a little bit of light coming in through this pinhole um, transferring onto the film. So what we need to do is create a shutter. Um, thankfully, with pinhole cameras and with using uh, photographic paper as our film, the ISO, which uh, hopefully if you're watching this, you're familiar with ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of um, the film, or in the case of digital cameras, the sensitivity of the sensor picking up light. Um, the ISO for this photographic paper is about uh, 4, um, where normal films are in that 100 to 200 to 400 range. This is at 4. So the exposure times for it are far longer than um, the fractions of a second you'd see in a normal camera. Um, and part of that, like I said, is due to the ISO of the paper. But the other part of it is really due to the size of the pinhole. So like I talked about earlier, we want to go for a smaller pinhole. Um, by keeping to a smaller pinhole, essentially you have an f-stop in the case of this, uh, playing around with it by using it on a digital body and making this pinhole kind of as small as I can. It's around an f-stop of 250. Um, so when you couple a low ISO uh, paper with an f-stop of 250, um, instead of having fraction of a second exposure times, you more or less have uh, about one minute to maybe even more on a not so sunny day exposure times. So kind of the way we've done the math on this, being it's ISO 4 paper, uh, F250, we're looking at about a 60 second exposure time that we need to open and close our shutter. So obviously we don't need anything too fancy. Um, what it talks about in books and what I've found works the best is to actually take um, a little extra bit of electrical tape and what I do is I just fold over one end of it so I have a little tab and then you basically just have a little sticky piece of tape and you lay that over your shutter and there you go your shutter's closed then you lay this out put it where you want for your exposure you know usually in this case just setting it on the ground in a level spot and then holding it while not trying to move the whole camera you just there you go peel off your shutter stick it next to it uh, stand there for a minute two minutes however long you need to do and then once the exposure is done you just gently take and place that back over and there boom now you have an exposed image inside your camera and you can take it back into your light bag or your dark bag and open this up and pull out your piece of paper and put a new one in and there you go that's a basic pinhole so I think what we're gonna have to do now is go outside and give this guy a test and see uh, how this worked out see if our math is right see if we get kind of a cool wide angle image from uh, putting that film on a curved plane. Um, there's a lot of other things we can try too. Obviously this is a little interesting with the curved back and the curved front. Um, another thing we can do and I want to try is just take and cut out a piece of cardboard and put it in as a flat back here so we can have this film be about three inches away from the shutter. Um, and we'll get kind of a wide angle image there because now we're putting the distance from the paper to the focus point about three inches. Um, and then just like a normal camera, when you do that, you give yourself a wider angle of view as that light focuses down in and then crosses onto the film plane. You'll get a wider angle of view, whereas with this one, you're getting a little narrower frame of view when you have it six inches away. Um, and that's hopefully something we can talk about in future videos when we dig a little more into how angle of view and how the actual uh, focus distance uh, on lenses work. But like I said for now, let's load this up with a real sheet of paper instead of just this uh, test piece and take it outside and expose with it. And then um, hopefully we'll cut back here and we'll go over how to develop this film, which is going to be tough because that has to be done obviously in a safe light environment. So having the camera and all the lights on isn't going to fly too well. But We'll basically just show kind of the images that come out of this. Um, you know, like normal, we'll cut to uh, the voiceover and the images, and we can see how well this worked or didn't work. So, all right, let's take this thing outside and have some fun. So here's the pinhole camera just set up right now on a one-minute exposure. Nothing too interesting, just some still life. So this is about the distance 
the camera is from the subject. So kind of see how it works out. All right, so things might look a little different right now. Um, that's because we actually have the red light on. So technically this is the dark room while it is light safe. So the only light that I have is just one uh, basically film safe light room light. So it's just a red LED bulb. So that's what's lighting this entire scene right now. So it's going to look a little weird, but this is the only way I can actually film uh, what we're going to do here next in the dark room. So um, we have taken our pinhole camera. Uh, we went out and took a couple shots with it actually, um, all of them around one minute to one and a half minutes. So we'll have just a couple different scenarios here. So we'll have three shots to work with, so uh, we'll see what we can do. So like I said, we took a couple shots in the pinhole, pulled those out, and I have those in just a light safe box right now. Um, what we're going to do first here is pour out our chemicals into our trays. So just the same as how we do for uh, film developing, we're going to do for paper developing. We're going to have a developer, we're going to have a fixer, and then in between those over here we have our stop bath. And our stop bath is going to be what kind of gives us that same stop between the developer and the fixer. Just like film. Um, paper developing is very similar to film. Uh, the times are a lot quicker and it's a little more interesting because hopefully uh, the reason I'm filming this part is we should be able to actually see the image as it comes in on the paper while we're developing it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pour in the chemicals and when we come back we will actually uh, pull one of the first shots out of our pinhole camera and we'll uh, toss it in the developer and see what comes out. So let's stick with it. Alright, so we got our chemicals poured out. We have our developer and our fixer and our stop bath over here. So we are going to take and pull out our first image. And now that we're under the safe light, this is good. So we have all of our white light turned off, including my external monitor that I usually use for focusing. So right now I just have the focus on my 51.4 just kind of locked on the edge of the trays here. So um, this won't be the most in focus thing, hopefully, but we'll try our best. And once we get this done, we can flip on some safe lights or some white lights once we're light safe against once this has been developed. And we can get a little better look at the image. So when we're doing paper developer, it's the same deal. Obviously, we started by tossing our uh, negative into the fixer here. We're going to do 90 seconds on the fixer, so a lot shorter than uh, we'd normally do. Um, while we're doing this, one of the kind of weird things that we'll see here, obviously this will be a negative image on the paper, um, which normally when you're developing the paper you end up with a positive image because you're actually projecting a negative onto it uh, to expose it. So the nice part is I'll be able to just flip uh, the invert, or I suppose not flip, but invert uh, the image uh, on the video here. So what you guys will see will be a positive image, but what we're coming out of here will be a negative image. So as interesting or as boring um, as that seems to you. Uh, what you guys hopefully can see here is that there's some of an image starting to uh, kind of show up on the paper here. This is always one of the more interesting parts of getting to do your own developing is kind of watching uh, an image kind of take shape out of the developer. Um, you can see on the edge here there's going to be these white sections and that's where we had our film kind of held to the uh, curved wall of our pinhole camera. Awesome, this is looking pretty good guys. Um, also, like I said, this was a curved pinhole camera, so we're going to get more of a distorted, wide-angle, almost fisheye image out of this, was the idea. Um, like I said, a lot of pinholes, just straight, standard shoebox, you know, piece of film at the back, and you'll end up with a pretty uh, standard-looking image. But, I mean, hey, we have tons of film cameras and all sorts of other cameras to get normal images out of. So, if you're going to go weird with a pinhole, might as well go all the way weird.
awesome. This looks like it's coming in pretty good. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I did one minute exposures for all of these, and like we talked about earlier in the video, um, that one minute exposure time is based off the ISO 4 speed of this paper film, uh, coupled with the F number for our pinhole, which, like I said, we're estimating it at about F250. So, and that's obviously an estimate. Um, we tried to make our pinhole as small as possible, but it's very hard to actually go back and measure um, the pinhole we've made, so you kind of just go with that estimate. But it looks like that estimate got us really in the ballparks. I really like uh, the way this is turning out. Pretty good tonally. Uh, definitely some nice contrast. So that is good. Um, I think we're coming up on this 90 seconds here. So what we'll do is take and pull this image out of the developer, um, and we'll put it in the stop bath. Uh, You'll notice that the whole time I've been kind of just moving it in the developer, and that's just to keep there from being any underdeveloped or any hot spots um, on the film, just from the developer maybe not being as strong or as concentrated on one spot if we would have left it the whole time. So, with that, we'll pull this guy out of the developer. Let it drip off there. And we'll move it over to our stop bath before we go and put it to the fixer. All right, so there we go, a nice little stop bath. And now we'll just drop it into the fixer for about a minute here uh, just to lock this in. So once we go back to a slightly lighted situation, we don't start fogging this image we've made. Um, and then the fun part is, like I said, once we get this done, we can take and scan this in on the flatbed scanner um, and kind of get a nice copy of this. So the same way we would with uh, any film negative, this just being kind of a paper copy. So definitely a little different. But you know what? The great part about this is the cost of entry is super low. Um, for this, like a 4x6 uh, photo paper, you can get a box of 100 count for under ten dollars I believe. Um, I know I have a box of four by six that uh, I keep down in the dark room. These are great obviously for pinhole cameras but really sometimes it's nice when you're working on developing or trying to nail an exposure when you're working with an enlarger. These are nice to uh, test out paper development times without wasting say an 8 by 10 or an 11 by 14 or a 16 by 20 piece of paper. So really great test pieces and also in our case really great for pinhole cameras um, maybe in the future if I have good luck with these 4x5 pinhole cameras uh, obviously like I said we have bigger paper sizes we could go to an 8x10 an 11x14 or even a 16x20 pinhole camera um, if we find a big enough box I think for a 16x20 it might be good to find a refrigerator box so if any of you know where I can get a refrigerator box, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll make it happen. We'll try some crazy stuff. I got some lenses laying around. We could go above pinhole and try to do something a little more creative. Alright, and there we go. Third image done. So, toss that into the stop bath. Alright, I'm going to take and put away these chemicals because now we're done. We've developed all three of our images. So we can put away these chemicals, turn back on our normal lighting, and get a closer look at what we actually developed and talk about it a little bit. All right, so here are our images. Um, they turned out really well. You can tell the size of our pinhole was small enough where you actually got really good detail um, out of this camera. Um, also, like I talked about in this video, the curved back kind of gave a really interesting view. Um, I want to talk more about all this and kind of the math that goes into what makes the pinhole work or what gives the pinhole these certain styles. Um, but instead of talking about it in this video, I'm going to go ahead and actually do a part two uh, pinhole camera deep dive video. So keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, thanks for watching.